All right, check, check, check. This is Xena Danger Evil. I guess I'm streaming. This is my first stream, so I'm just kind of testing the wheels on this thing, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't. Uh, this is not intended to be super interesting. I'm just kind of uh, figuring out how this whole thing works. But while I do that, I'm going to be doing a fresh install of Dwarf Fortress, which might be useful to anyone interested in the uh, free version of Dwarf Fortress. So, uh, yeah, I can give you a little step-by-step -step guide and uh, see what I do to do it. Um, there's, of course, the paid version coming out uh, December, I believe, 4th or 6th. And I strongly encourage anyone to buy Dwarf Fortress, but I really love the free version, and I may just keep playing that version along with uh, Blind IRL and Krug Smash. They both seem to really like the classic version. But uh, who knows? The... The paid version may win people over. So um, what we're looking at here is uh, df.wicked-code.com, which is a mirror repository of what's called the Lazy Noob Pack. So Dwarf Fortress is a little opaque. Everyone knows that. If you've heard anything about Dwarf Fortress, uh, you know that it is difficult. Um, it's not that difficult. It's just kind of specific. So um, what a lot of people do is they use the lazy noob pack which I actually not being a noob um, still really love and use every time I play so there's gonna be basically a bunch of these packs this is the Dwarf Fortress version which is a 0.47 which means they're 47 percent of the way done with Dwarf Fortress um, and they've been working on it for the better part of 20 years so hopefully in, <coughs> I don't know, another 22 years, they might get to version 1.0 and actually release a finished game. Um, but uh, regardless of whether or not it's finished, it is fantastic. So we're going to download this new one. I have been using Release Candidate, I think, 5 or 6 for a while. So this is going to be a fresh install for me. And I'll show you kind of how easy it is to boot up the Lazy Noob Pack and uh, do some settings and uh, get into the game immediately. So we're going to open that file. This is just a zip file. Um, let's see. I mean, you know how to handle a zip file, I'm sure. But, uh... There we go. So... You're in the zip file here. This is Windows, obviously. I don't really uh, mess around with Mac. Um, you can do this on Linux, but it's going to be a slightly different experience. And if you're on Linux, you're already well used to getting around files and moving stuff around for yourself, honestly. So um, I, I run Linux too. But uh, I prefer playing this on Windows. It's a little less buggy. Um, it's not written natively for Linux. There's a few people that help the programmer out. Anyway, so we're just going to copy these out. I'm going to go to desktop, new folder, lazy new pack, let's see, RC11. It actually takes quite a while to unpack this, which is kind of surprising because, uh, Zip has been around for a while. Zip usually only really works on text files, but also a lot of Dwarf Fortress is actually made with text files. Um, all their settings and init files, uh, creature stuff is all text files, so it's actually very easy to edit once you know the format. So it's actually very easy to modify and like add your own creatures and, and play around with. And the code is all closed source. Um, if <laughs> uh, Tarn, uh, the programmer, has said that uh, you know if he dies he might check 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 okay my audio just cut out and that's annoying and that's why I'm doing this A little uh little test run. I wonder how long my audio had cut out. Hopefully not long. I need to get a different uh, headset mic thing. I think it got damaged in my re recent move. Anyway, um, yeah, so the uh, 
code base is all closed source. But uh, if Tarn dies before he finishes, he might, you know, in his will, open source it so people can continue his legacy. Uh, Tarn and his brother uh, have been working on this for, like I said, the better part of 20 years. It's really been a passion project. Um, and they've been surviving off of this project from people who are devoted to it and uh, just give them money for it. So it's been uh, donation-based for a long time, but they very recently had a health scare. And so they're kind of going the more official route and partnered with itch.io and, um, and Steam to release an actual game so that they can get, you know, some sort of official money and go to a bank and say, like, look, we have a, a business that has revenue coming from this source, blah, 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 instead of, you know, just donations and so they can get some health care. So I fully support that. I'm going to be buying as many copies of the Steam version as I can and gifting them to friends, even if they don't play it. Um, I have a Patreon set up. I give them five bucks a month. Uh, they're pretty good. You know, they're, they're awesome people, and I really like the work that they do. So hopefully you do too. But if you don't, that's fine. So let's see. We're still waiting for this to... Ugh, 32%. All right. Well, so this is the mirror, obviously, but... uh. So this is the mirror, uh, df.wickedcode.com. It's supposed to be hosted on Bay 12 games, but when I tried to download it earlier, it was super laggy. So the mirror might work better for you. There's also a lot more interest right now, so they might be uh, getting hit. As you can see, this looks pretty... Uh, well, the internet, when they started the game, it looks very kind of uh, GeoCities. And uh, the game itself, too. Uh, definitely reflects the age in which it was started. So uh, there's going to be really good forums here. Um, Dwarf Fortress itself, you know, lots of ASCII. Um, they're really good about talking to the community that plays and um, answering their questions. Every month they actually have all their financials posted, uh, w you know, what money they're getting um, through donations, um, also just answering questions from players, uh, be they, you know, a player that has been playing for a week or a player that's been playing for 14 years. Uh, granted, the players that have been playing for 14 years don't definitely have more insightful questions and uh, a lot more pertinent questions. They tend to get kind of featured more. So this is neat uh, things to look at here on the forums. There's also the Dwarf Fortress Reddit, which... Uh, there's usually a sticky uh, at the very top. There's a bi-weekly DF question thread. It's great for newbies. If you've never played before and have some questions, uh, the community is very uh, forgiving <laughs> for dumb questions because, uh, you know, at, at some rate, all questions are dumb. And, you know, we've all been there. So they're, they're very good about answering questions, um, posting neat things they've discovered. There's uh, stuff they call Dwarven Science, which is... You know, just having a theory about how the game works and then uh, testing it rigorously and seeing if that is, in fact, actually how the game works. And we found, uh, you know, a lot of uh, bugs or undocumented, uh, quote-unquote, features that way. And some of those bugs are now features, even though they were never intended to be that way. There's some minecart uh, physics that, uh, that are now... Uh, so precious to the community that Tarn will probably not remove them, even though they were never intended um, behavior. So there's definitely a lot of back and forth between the community and the and the programmer. So let's see. Uh, looks like it finished. Let's see. All right. So this is Lazy New Pack, fresh install. You'll see there's Dwarf Fortress 47.05. That is more or less the current uh, free release. All you need to do is do the starter pack launcher. I'll double click that and then Well, 
then it'll pop up. There we go. Okay. Window capture, blah, blah, blah. All right, so we're gonna do, so this is, like I said, fresh install. This is a lazy new pack. This has a ton of extra um, player created uh, tools and ways to uh, manipulate settings that are much easier than finding the right text file in the uh, in the directory structure of the game and you know editing something that may or may not break the game and crossing your fingers and hoping it works so uh, a lot of these if you've never played before uh, some of these will not make sense but what I'm going to be doing is Setting a few things here. Child dwarves are such a pain in the ass. Um, let's see. So I'm going to leave most everything pretty vanilla here. I'm going to do Vetlinger, though. That takes a minute for it to... So these are um, tile sets. Um, there's a, a lot of uh, tile sets that people have created just so that uh, you don't have to play in just pure ASCII. Because um, uh, the ASCII can be a little jarring and it can be a little difficult to uh, to be able to translate in your in your head to what's going on. So I usually use Ventlinger. Uh, I actually, that's not true. I usually use Krug Smash but uh, I'm not going to be installing that today because that's a little, a little too involved for what I'm doing right now. So utilities, these are, uh, again, like I said, third-party utilities that uh, kind of help. Dwarf Therapist is almost a must for me. It's just uh, it's handy. Uh, it's a way the program goes in and actually creates kind of like more of a spreadsheet of your dwarves and all their traits. Um, all those traits are accessible to you in the normal game, but... Uh, the interface is a little opaque, and it's helpful. We'll do advanced. So we're gonna look at the FPS. I usually like a little faster FPS. Um, and <clears throat> I'm quick to pause in the second I notice anything is going wrong. Um, auto saves. Let's see, do initial save. Pause on save. Yeah, those are good. <clears throat> I'm gonna do, this is automatic job assignments, which that's controversial. So if you're watching this and you're gonna look at some gameplay stuff, I'm gonna be leaving out some of what some people would say is a huge part of Dwarf Fortress which is actually like going in and manually changing job assignments that the dwarves do. Um, I'm going to do it. Uh, all right. So I got all that. Good there. All right. And so yeah, we're going to do this. And now I'm going to build a world. <laughs> DF hack. Let me see. A bunch of windows open up when you do this. It's kind of hard to figure out which one is the Dwarf Fortress window. There it is. All right. So yeah, the the console that we're looking at here is uh, the DF hack console. So you can go in and uh, there's uh, scripts that you can look at. So. 
All right. So unfortunately, I didn't get the uh, the full intro uh, captured with OBS, which is an old uh, ANSI art thing that Charn did years and years ago. It's uh, definitely nostalgic. I hope they keep some form of it with the uh, Steam release. Uh, let's see. I can go away. Checking with OBS. Let's see. Okay. All right, so that's good. We have the dwarf therapist start. Huh? Doesn't look like it did. It's annoying. Maybe I should start it manually. Or maybe I didn't. No, I didn't. There we go. I didn't click on it correctly. Uh, we're opening it now. We'll do yet another window capture. We'll do dwarf therapist. What? Now just layer. What are you doing? Anyway, doesn't matter. All right, well, Dwarf Therapist is opened. I said I'm playing with OBS and seeing, seeing what the settings do so that if I actually you know start playing I won't be fumbling around on the actual game but uh yeah so I guess the uh Audio is coming through. Hope it is. Looks like it is. That is uh, the programmer actually just noodling around on guitar again several years ago. And again, it's very nostalgic. The new uh, Steam version will come out with a lot of fan music. Uh, I think maybe 13, 14 tracks, something like that. Um, let's see. I'm debating on whether to just create a world and uh, play it. But I think I might design a world with advanced parameters. Yeah, I think I will. All right. So this is, again, kind of in the weeds of uh, Dwarf Fortress. But uh, it does kind of show you um, really, really just how insanely complex it is. So we're gonna, so these are all the default things. Like if you're gonna just create a, a world from the default uh, uh, menu there, these are the things that it would do. So you can copy one of these and then kind of modify it. So I'm gonna do a medium region. And copy that, and then we're going to change it to danger evil. I uh, just did that with uh, hitting C for copy param set. Um, now we're going to enter with E, enter advanced parameters. So let's uh, use all these seeds. So. Anybody wants to know. Like a billion dollars. <laughs> There we go. Okay. So we're going to use seed to yes, and I'm changing the seed to evil just so. Uh, 
And here is where my audio cut out again. So, like I said in, you know, earlier in this video, I need a new microphone because I don't know why this thing keeps not working. So I'll try to, um, you know what I'm doing here. I'm going through some of the advanced parameters and uh, I'm trying to make a world that has a lot of volcanoes and a lot of rivers, but I'm doing it very quickly. Um, if I were playing on my own time without uh, uh, wasting your time, um, I would spend a lot more time on this and, um, and tweak a lot of the things so that I could get a world where I had, you know, 40 volcanoes and a ton of rivers. Um, but uh, since this is kind of just for more noobs and kind of just showing how to uh, start a lazy noob pack, uh, what I did is uh, ran through a bunch of the options and uh, tried to see if they were going to work. And how you do that is you just save the options and then um, make a world. Uh, and the way the world generation process works in Dwarf Fortress is, uh, you know, you have to you set minimums that you want in the world, and then if the random number generator doesn't reach those minimums, it'll try again with another random uh, world. So if you say you want, you know, 40 volcanoes, but the parameters that you set up don't actually generate those volcanoes, you'll just constantly get worlds that won't uh, succeed, and it'll just constantly cycle through trying to uh, make a world that that conforms to your arbitrary and capricious um, settings. Uh, so there's a real balance between giving the world generator what it needs to uh, make the thing that you want and uh, lowering your standards so that a world can actually be generated. Um, and there are ways to make just absolutely ridiculous worlds. I haven't delved too, too deep into uh, the advanced parameters. Uh, some people have. Um, I have made some worlds that are pretty interesting, um, for me at least, in the past. Uh, what I'm doing with this is uh, trying to get like a volcano and a river. Um, I, I wasn't uh, entirely um, expecting to succeed, and I did not. So what you're seeing here is I'm going through a bunch of uh, parameters and uh, while I was doing this, I was talking, but for some reason, my microphone just cut out. So this is me editing in more audio. Um, and yeah, I mean, like I said at the beginning of the video, this is a, this is a test run uh, for Twitch. And obviously, I've discovered that um, this microphone is absolute garbage. And I'll, uh, before I do another stream or recording, um, I need to get another tool. So... That's what we're doing there. That's weird. I'm just like narrating the thing that I just did 40 minutes ago. It's ridiculous. So you can see here, um, those are worlds being generated and failing. So I had set up that I wanted, I don't know, something like 25 volcanoes. And the parameters that I gave it weren't generating 25 volcanoes, so they were all failing. Um, world generation is... Uh, kind of like the crux of the biscuit <laughs> with this game. A lot of people think that when you're playing Dwarf Fortress, you're, you're playing a fortress or in adventure mode, you're playing an individual like uh, role-playing game uh, sort of game, but you're not. Uh, really what you're doing is you're playing a world. And you're setting up that world and the conflicts and villainy and, uh, and situations that are going to arise in that world. And then you're going through. You can see, all right, so I, I tweaked some of the things that are still not working. So all those <laughs> screens are are more failed worlds. So I'm, I'm slowly, like, basically uh, tweaking the settings to be a little bit more forgiving. Um, I don't know when my voice actually cuts back into the video. I think it does at some point. God, I hope it does. I can just narrate again. Uh, that's fine. Um, but here we go, editing some more settings. So, and as a new player, like, don't do advanced world <laughs> parameters because this will happen. You'll you'll end up tweaking some number that doesn't make much sense, and you may think 
you know kind of what it does conceptually, but the, the, the underlying math of world generation is one of the most uh, gnarly and complex things of this game. So, what's your first game? Just do, like, just start a world. Don't do advanced parameters. Just start a world and just do medium or small or even pocket. Um, and you'll you'll find something in there that'll that'll work for you. Um, I'm trying to do a specific thing with this world. I actually do want to become a mountain home, and I want to do every single industry. And that is shooting the moon in Dwarf Fortress. It probably won't work. I will probably die, or I'll probably get uh, frustrated, or um, something will happen that will be terrible. And that is uh, that is what Dwarf Fortress, uh, the Dwarf Fortress community calls fun. Um, it is losing. Losing is fun. Dying is fun. You get to start again. Um, it's a simulation, and you, there's no, you never conquer the world, so there's no, like, end game result where, like, y you win the game. It's just a continuation of the simulation. So, um, now we can see, like, this is, uh, a world that kind of succeeded. Um, so I, th I was kind of pointing some things out where volcanoes are, kind of zooming out on the world, but it turns out as the world gets generated and you can kind of see like it it can still fail um, after a little bit it'll still find some uh, end case that doesn't uh, succeed with uh, the parameters you set up so I think this world ends pretty soon we start another one because I just did this 40 minutes ago and Kind of so weird narrating something I just narrated. All right, so yeah, another world started. Sometimes you get very deep into a world, and then it just gets thrown out by the uh, by the random number generator. Um, I'm glad using Audacity now. I have the actual visual feedback of my audio getting recorded. I don't know why this headset kept cutting out like that. It's really frustrating. I never did that before. But then I don't actually really talk on the mic very often. So, uh, eh, it's, all, it's a learning process. But yeah, so we can see the world being generated. It worked. Um, and then you can see civilizations getting placed. Those are uh, elves, dwarves, humans, goblins, and kobolds. Um, and then it'll do, you know, rivers, history, we're in uh, history here. Um, I usually like uh, about an 80-year-old world. I like really young worlds. Um, there's a lot more mega beasts and uh, forgotten beasts and titans and dragons. The dragons are actually young in, uh, in young worlds, but uh, I... A lot of people like to let world generation go on for, you know, 500, 700 years of, you know, in-world. And that can take a couple hours on your computer. Um, and that way you have a lot more, uh, there's a richer history, there's more lore. Um, there's a, uh, it's, it's a different style of gameplay that I care about. I mean, I, I care about it, but I, I much rather create my own um my own lore when I play. But uh, this game has uh, a lot of different aspects for a lot of different people that like to do a lot of different things. So we're saving the world here, and then it's going to bump you back out to the main screen, which, uh, meh. The Steam release is going to actually let you just go straight into playing from creating a world, which is intuitive for anyone that's <laughs> played, you know, games before. But basically, you can't start playing until you have a world. Um, so we have a world now that we've generated. We're going to start playing. Um, the R in the in the left side over there is a DF hack uh, thing. So DF hack is a player generated um, program that uh, lets you hack Dwarf Fortress. Uh, it lets you do, see more things, do more things. You can change things live in the game. Um, it it can be seen as kind of cheating depending on what scripts you use, but it can also just be uh, a useful tool to um, kind of expand some of the playability. So I use DF hack, but I don't, um, you know, I don't teleport 
things. I don't uh, I don't create uh, veins of gold where there were none. Um, you're seeing the uh, when you start. There's a little two week precursor where it kind of generates some history for you. And now you have a map where uh, you can kind of decide where your dwarves are going to go. You're going to start a new settlement. And there's a couple different windows here. Uh, far right is the whole world. The middle, sort of middle, is uh, kind of where you're zooming into. And the far left is like the super, super um, close-up of the region that you will be settling in. And uh, it's hard to describe like all of the things that are going on on the screen, but uh, down below um, you can see like the red letters at the very bottom are the DF hack options. I'm going to hit A here in a second. That's going to show us a little bit more information about uh, the regions that we're looking at. You'll see a blinking yellow X, and that is uh, kind of the cursor where we're where we're thinking about embarking. Um, I don't know what I was saying when I first actually. <sighs> I recorded this, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's gonna start moving around here any minute. Or will it? Yeah, I must have been describing something very, very well. I wonder what I was saying. Anyway, so this this map, it looks pretty simple to me. Like the light blue is water, dark green is kind of forest. The gray stuff are um, hills and mountains. Um, you can't actually embark in just mountainous terrain. You have to have uh, some hills and uh, uh, trees, brooks, access to that sort of thing. And um, you know, Tarn actually studied a bunch of geology to figure out kind of how um, how just the earth works so that when he made the world generator he could make it as accurate as possible so there's you know there's rainfall and drainage and how rivers start and erosion uh, the different types of um, metals that exist in different types of soil Oh, hey, the original audio is coming back. Here we go. Bleh. Hello. Jesus fucking Christ. All right, these headphones are garbage. Um, yeah, if I do this again, I'm going to have to get a different... Uh, different microphone set up. Well, I wonder how much of my last stuff got cut off by this. Uh, it's fine. This is a test. This is what it's for. We're going to see. I also wonder how much of my giant room was audible on all that if my microphone was even working. All right. So what we have is a... Uh, So this is the whole world. This is a little zoomed in portion. This uh, yellow X right here is the square that we're looking at. You're going to have some information on that square here. You're also going to have like a little zoom in here sort of so you can see like there's a little brook or a stream, mm, hills and mountains up here. Um, I just hit A for Embark Assistant, which gives us that's a DF hack command, which gives us a little bit more granular detail on what's available in this little spot here. Uh, so it shows us that uh, there's goblins, elves, and humans nearby. Um, the stuff that we can uh, assume we can find in the in the ground: iron, silver, copper, zinc, and lead. There's a light aquifer. Uh, there's probably four layers of soil before you hit rock. There's also sand and clay. All those things are useful depending on what you want to do with your fort. Uh, I'm going to be trying to make a mountain home. I'm shooting for the moon on this one. It's uh, probably going to be a little ridiculous. I probably won't make it. But uh, I, I started with a population cap of 50. So this is going to be the expeditionary force. Um, let's see. And so these people are going to uh, 
These people are going to kind of set it up for everyone else. And then we're going to open the floodgates and let all the migrants in. Um, there's different things that happen with uh, different populations. Uh, you can get attacked by different things depending on uh, what your population is. So I set my strict population cap at 50. Um, so we probably won't get attacked uh, unless I, you know, specifically aggravate some people. So this is a little bit nerfed. If you play uh, with default population cap of 200, uh, your fort generally gets really overcrowded really fast and you start getting attacked super early. Um, I'm down for that, but uh, I don't know, this game I'm going to try to actually plan stuff out and try to get a mountain home and do it right. Um, I'm going to try to actually do all of the industries. We'll see. It's uh, Again, it's, it's, it's kind of a moonshot. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Why is that not going away? Cool. There we go. All right, OBS. I love the software. It's actually pretty easy to use. It's just a little bit of a learning curve. So, like I said, I wanted a volcano, but that it was a little difficult to to get the number of volcanoes that I wanted, because a lot of times volcanoes will be like this little red carrot here. That is a volcano. But it's in the middle of a bunch of mountains, and you can't start in mountains. Uh, you'll see down here the E and bark is grayed out, so we cannot actually start there. But that is the volcano. The key commands are kind of obtuse here. I won't let you know what they are, because I don't think it'll add much. Um, yeah, this isn't a tutorial per se. Um, I did want to show people how to get the Lazy Noob pack because actually I actually haven't seen any videos of people doing that and I thought that might be useful. So here is a volcano. Oh, we can embark there. It looks... So this is a savanna. It's hot. Very sparse trees. Moderate vegetation. There's a brook, so there's water, and the volcano. So that does have iron and flux. Hmm. There's goblin, human, and then skulking are actually cobbled. They can uh, can sneak in and steal stuff, but they're not. They're just a nuisance. They don't really matter. So that's interesting. Might like that spot. There's not a whole lot of like. Expensive, like fancy stuff there, obviously. And I usually don't do desert embarks. I don't know. Let's see. I'll make a note on the map again. And this, ugh, the note <laughs> interfaces uh, is very garbage. I hate it. It took a long time for me to actually figure out how to do that. And it's still not all that useful. Not marble, but we're right next to what is that? Looks like goblins. Like literally, right here is a goblin uh, stronghold. But has iron flux, has marble. That's cool. Not as cool as the other one. Let's see. Another volcano over here, right on the water. Oh no, not right on it. Okay, so this one has flux, iron, and gold, and aluminum, and marble. It's cool. And you got goblin and human. We got woodland, which is good. Okay, I like this one better. No aquifer. I like this one. You can tap. So you hit tab, and this up here and this over here will change to give you different information. So we're at war with goblins. They're nearby. There are dwarves nearby, and there's humans nearby. So the humans are not at war with us. We could trade with them. These are the different uh, dwarven civilizations that we can come from. And you'll see over here, it'll highlight in blue where that civilization is. So that's kind of close to where we are. We can scroll through. There's another dwarven civilization up here, which is, you know, again, kind of close. And then way to the south down here. Probably not going to do that. You don't have to be close to your civilization. And actually, I've never... I've I've settled far away from my home civilization, and I haven't really noticed any detrimental anything. 
So I think it's just more kind of a role play thing. Uh, this will give you kind of a heat map of the uh, elevations, like the the height of your surroundings. So we are, whoa, like, huh? It's like very steep uh, cliffs there, huh? Very steep. Kind of like that. I like a lot of jagged, steep things. Um, and the volcano's right in the middle there. There's no brook. That's fine. We don't really need water. Dwarves don't drink water unless they really have to. And they they hate it. They uh they generally drink alcohol. I kinda wanna just start here. But I'll make another note. Say yes on that one. And I just wanna do a quick survey of uh, some other volcanoes and see what we have. Volcanoes are very handy for uh, making metal stuff and disposing of garbage. Okay, that's, yeah, there's not a whole lot of volcanoes. There's just that one. All right. Yeah, I think I'm going to start there. Yeah, let's embark with uh, this guy here. All right, so the volcano and the over is all pretty similar. There are different biomes. Oh, there's another biome down here, which could be useful. If we move over here, then we're straddling biomes. And we have what? F1 over here we got. Okay, so this biome that's flashing green. Iron, gold, silver, copper, and aluminum. This one has eh, this is kind of the same stuff, but it's a different biome, huh? This is tropical shrubland. That's tropical shrubland. Uh, deep soil, some soil. Yet yeah, not, not a huge difference. All right. There's no third biome. Okay, I'm gonna embark here. I want a volcano. Ooh, salt water. Very difficult. <laughs> they give you some warnings. You should heed some warnings, but other warnings are just fun. So the Lazy New Pack will have actual, uh, basically, uh, your dwarves already kind of kitted out with skills and and items, uh, so that you don't really have to think too hard about it. You can just uh, you can just start. Uh, play now is kind of default. I don't like it. I always prepare for the journey carefully. I really like to uh, make sure that um, the dwarves that I give certain jobs to are uh, kind of emotionally up for it. So we're gonna prepare for the journey. So here we have our dwarves. Let's see. Can we? There we go. I'll probably look a little better. So you always start with seven. I don't know if there's a mod that you can change the number. I think it's always seven. So these are the individual dwarves. So down here you can view them, and it'll give you their whole personality. So he's very slow to tire and tough, uh, but slow to heal and clumsy. Uh, amazing memory, spatial sense, intellect, good intuition, good creativity. So he's got a lot of upsides on this one. He is 51 years old, which is eh, middle age for a dwarf They I think they live to like 140, something like that. Um, he personally finds sacrifice to be the height of folly and doesn't care about nature one way or the other. He dreams of raising a family. So these uh, he dreams of, you know, a dwarf. You know, if they if he gets to uh, get married and and have a kid, that will up his mood quite a bit, and this will change to he has succeeded uh, in in his goal or something. You can always you can always make them miserable, um, and then when they're miserable, they are very very difficult to deal with. They will not do as they're told. Um, they will beat each other, murder each other. Uh, if they die when they're miserable, they come back as very vengeful ghosts, and sometimes those ghosts can rip the arms off of uh, your dwarves just randomly. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of weird little details in here. 
but since I am going to be, this is an expeditionary force that will be up to 50, but I'm going to be digging a lot. So I kind of want two miners. I usually go with just one. Oh, and here is where dwarf therapists can uh, come in handy. So. Man, I wish, wish I had labeled these. I wonder if I even have Dwarf Therapist as a window. <laughs> yeah, I probably don't. Let's do... Okay. There we go. Therapist. There we go. So this is Dwarf Therapist. This is a very useful tool. You don't have to use it by any stretch, but uh, it's very useful. So, we connect. so now we have like kind of a grid with all of our dwarves. It, it won't let you connect until you actually have dwarves uh, for it to read. Um, and this will go through kind of all their skills, except we are still creating them. So it's like they don't actually have any skills. They have some social skills. And, uh, huh. Interesting. We have attributes, though. So we have strength, agility, toughness, endurance, recuperation. All that, so that's neat. I actually like to get a really weak person to be a miner, because uh, the act of mining gets them very strong very fast. So that's a way to kind of level them up very quickly. So Rigoth Zanmusar. And then, if you, yeah, you hover over it, it'll give you all the... All the details there. So a musician, keyboardist, wind instrument, poet, speaker. It's weird because I... Hmm. Hmm. So I haven't assigned any of those skills yet. That's very strange. I actually never really looked at this before I had... Uh, before I had embarked. Interesting. All right, so... is our dwarf surface. Let me actually name this. Like I said, this is a learning experience for me, so this is not supposed to be super fun right now, but uh, figuring out how to do this before, you know, before I do anything else. All right, so he's private to the point of paranoia. Hmm. Unwilling to reveal even basic information about himself. I feel you. Dislikes obligations and will try to avoid being bound by them. <laughs> Though he is conflicted by this for more than one reason. St form strong emotional bonds. So each of these dwarves, like, they have a, a, an emotional history, and there's a lot of a lot of programming in the background that uh, that does all that functioning. And, and then, you know, when they interact with each other in the actual game, it, it can change those. And if they have really good experience or really bad experience, they can actually change their personality and it can change their mind about things. Um, and the game doesn't tell you that any of that is happening. It's just <laughs> happening. And the dwarf will act di a little differently. Um, so it's, it's, the, it's less of a game and more of a simulation. Um, it's almost like, you know, The Sims and Minecraft, sort of. So, uh, I'm sorry, I believe that was the weak guy that I wanted it to be a minor. Yes, this is on Masar. So you, I'm going to come over here and give him a bunch of skills in minor. Uh, I like giving teacher to just about everyone. Um, let's see, these are my initial seven. If they all had to do something. He's going to be doing a lot of digging, so he really doesn't need a whole lot else. But he's also going to get super strong, so let's give him some fighting skills. And then I also... let's do... Nah. No, let's do Musician. 
usually don't do uh, any of the social skills to begin with, but uh, it can be <laughs> kind of funny. Um, all of their all their stuff is procedurally generated, so they'll actually um, be songs and poems and dances that are all generated in your culture, and then you can kind of share those in taverns with other cultures, and you can actually spread those uh, poems and songs and dances. Uh, you can gather some from other people that visit your taverns. It's, uh, and again, like, there's very little to do with gameplay, but uh, it's just a neat neat thing that's happening in the background that, you, you know, blink and you miss it. If you're not looking for it, uh, you won't even notice it. All right, 82, can't fathom why anyone would want to live in an orderly and harmonious society. Dude, these guys are punk rock. Values tranquility. Okay. That's not really values skills related to fighting. So this guy's not going to be a fighter. Stuff so heal. Let's see. Intuition, musical sense, affinity for language, sharp intellect, good feel, socialist. He's going to be the leader. All right. Yeah, he's, he's going to be the leader. He's going to be... Yeah, we're going to go back to what I eat. You just do like a couple points in leader because we only have ten to give him, and he's going to be doing a lot of different things. He is going to be a record keeper, an organizer, an appraiser, a negotiator, a pacifier, yeah, teacher too. All right. Um, one tactician. So this guy is going to be our leader, and he's going to do a lot of paperwork because he's just going to get all the, all the leadership roles dumped on him. Normally, there's like three different roles that can be three different dwarves, but I want my other dwarves to be more useful. So he's going to be doing a little bit of everything. Do we want to give him? Let's give him like stone crafter just so he can have a hobby. All right. So quick to heal, quick to tire and flimsy. So again, not a fighter. Great musical sense, but like nothing else. Okay, you're worthless. Um, you're gonna be carpenter, or uh, maybe a miner too. Let's see. Actually. Yeah, he's kind of dumb. Let's make him another miner. Uh, he's not going to be a fighter, though, so let's... While well, he's not mining, we need... Oof. Uh, hmm. Nah, that's fine. Let's, uh... Let's see what else we can give him. Cook might be okay. Now let's do... I don't like any of that. He's going to be doing a lot of mining, but once we're done mining, I want to be able to do something else. Furnace operator, no, shouldn't need that. A woodcrafter. Like Miller and. Miller and Thresher. Worthless. Alright, this guy. Ooh. Person has a negative view of those who exercise power over others and respects the law. Wow. These are all just anti authoritarian little punk rockers. This is mighty, rarely sick, agile, and quick to heal. Great musical sense, very good sense of empathy. Poor focus. Okay. She's gonna be a uh, fucking military dwarf. All in, dude. She's gonna be the leader here. Again, teacher, we do tactician, leader, um, I always like spearman, but let's do hammer, we'll do shield user, we'll do dodger. The tactician is a very difficult skill to train up. You just have to kind of go out and fight stuff. 
So having a tactician right off the bat really helps your military. So she's going to be the military lead. Uh, we're going to need a doctor here pretty soon. We're also going to need an herbalist, maybe. Brewer. Five families. Mm. It's not particularly value the truth. Man, these dwarves are a little skeezy. Deep well of patience, creativity, and intellect. That's fine. Yeah, you can be a doctor. So again, I like teacher for all the original dwarves, just so they can uh, pass on their the skills I'm giving them. So we're gonna do. All the doctory stuff. And then, since doctors don't actually do much until they really <laughs> are needed, we're going to also make you the grower. That's good. Let's see. You are. Doesn't respect a society that has settled into harmony. <laughs> Man, these guys are dicks. Okay, quick to tire. Uh, great creativity, be able to focus, intellect, and memory. That's fine. Well, you can be. So I also really like. It's hard to teach up um, weaponsmithing. So we'll give her that. I'm gonna do maybe some wood cutting. Uh, let's see. And brewer. Brewers are very important in dormant society. Slow to tire and tough. What am I missing? What do I need from this guy? Herbalist is good right in the beginning, so you can just gather a bunch of plants and you're fine. Let's do mason, too. We need a mason. Oop, out of points. All right, so this was just the dwarven screen. Down here, our points are now at zero. The other thing you spend points on is equipment. I am going to remove one of them. We're going to go no step ladder, wheelbarrow, crutches, splints, buckets. We can just make these. Let's see. Yeah, cloth. I don't need it. All right. So now we have 512 points again. We're going to do teacher. Eh. Tactician too. Another tactician is never a bad thing. So over here we have pets. Um, I do like to have a mating pair of dogs. You get a lot of dogs real quick that way, and then you can train them to be war dogs, and then they uh, they can they can wreck some shit. They're handy to have. usually do some alpacas too, they're a little expensive. I'm wondering, could you see pigtails? I got 470, that's fine. So I'll do mating pair of alpacas. And now we're going to Tumorous coal, like a bunch of it. This will help with forging um, metals early on, even though we're at a volcano. We want to do some coal. We're going to do. There are reasons I'm doing these, but they're not interesting. Powders, gypsum powders is such a pain in the ass to find in the wild, and you need it for casts, so. 
I like to just have some. It's not always uh, easy to trade for. There's an extra slot. Else was there. Yeah, why? Huh. And Coke. Huh. Nah, that's fine. Well, that can be kind of a pain in the ass early on, too. Okay, so we got still have 100 points. So, I could. You know what? Let's get that copper battle axe back. Oh, and then we can do. More helmet spawn, pigtail seeds. Let's just get more meat. Possum meat. Sure. Alright. We're down to zero. So we can also name the fort and then name the group. We can also make our symbol, but that's kind of a pain in the ass. So fort. Uh, let's see. We're going to clear. Okay. New evil. Evil dangers. Hmm. Uh, that was too easy. All right. That's the fort name. See. So. What am I doing? Come on. Danger of evil. Right. Yeah. I'm in. Let's do it. I'm going to embark. And uh, watch the game crash. Oof. Might be crashing. Hmm. Seems to be working. I've arrived, I've arranged for the mountain home, blah, 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 supply caravan, blah, 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 blah. All right, so we're going to start. So immediately the game will uh, crash. It's going to crash. Oh, God, it's crashing. Oof. Yeah, it seems like it's crashing. Nope. Sweet. That started paused. That's nice. Okay, so... Nice. There's our volcano right here. So that's all magma. These are my little guys. And you can see multiple uh, Z levels, basically, up and down. So I'm focused on the level that my dwarves are at. You can go one up. You see the trees starting to get branches up higher. Trees having leaves up higher. And just as the uh, stuff further down below gets kind of fainter. So you can see multiple Z levels here. Go down one, you don't see the dwarves anymore, and this is uh, stuff we can dig into. Down further, down further, down further, down further, down further, down further. So like I said, very steep cliffs. So... thinking I might stop it here, and then maybe the next stream will be the actual play because um, I want to check out this video and see uh, you know how terrible it is or what worked and what didn't so I'm gonna save this escape save game
Oh, the music stopped. Huh. It's weird. Alright, we're gonna quit. Alright, well... I know no one watched this, but, uh... I might upload it to YouTube or something. Uh, at least the first little bit you can show how to get the Lazy Noob pack, and I'm gonna see, uh, see how this worked, or, uh, you know, or didn't. <laughs>